Hello everybody. We are back once again. I am Tim with Golf Cart Garage. Uh, we are about to do our weekly Q&A here. We're going to go over some questions that we get at Golf Cart Garage. We're going to talk about some golf cart issues. We may even chat with some live people. We are live right now on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. This is July the 7th. July the 7th, 12 o'clock noon Central Time. Uh, I am a part of the Gearheads On Demand service that we offer at Golf Cart Garage. Gearheads On Demand is a service that we offer where you can set an appointment uh, for me to call you and I can, I'll can personally talk with you about your golf cart related issue. Maybe I can steer you in the right direction. Maybe I can help you uh, repair your golf cart. Uh, I can call you on the phone or you can even set up a video session where I'll send you a link to your phone and you click the link and then I can take control of your camera and I can see what you're pointing at. It's not always necessary but sometimes it is. Sometimes it might help for me to have a video session so I can see what you're doing or see what you're talking about. If you're interested in that service click the link in the description and it will bring you to the scheduling page and you can uh, schedule an appointment with me and I'll be there with myself or one of the other technicians at Golf Cart Garage. Uh, let's see. I hope everybody had a happy and safe 4th of July weekend last weekend. It was a busy weekend everywhere, I'm sure, and hope everybody got through that and had a safe and wonderful time. Let's see. We're going to get started with the questions here. So the garage is now open. So here we go. Question number one. This is from John. <clears throat> it says, hello, at times I have a hesitation when I hit the throttle and just acts like it wants to go, then all of a sudden it engages. It seems to help if I only give one half to one quarter throttle. Well, the make and model of your car would, would help me to determine what type of potentiometer that you have. So what type of potentiometer that we're dealing with, because it's obviously if you have a hesitation there's going to be something to do with your solenoid activation circuit it could be anything from your potentiometer micro switch it could be uh, your solenoid itself uh, depending on which electrical system you have it could also be controller the controller can be involved in the solenoid activation circuit but if this is a, a region car or if it you know, depends on if it's a region car or a series car so it's going to be something tied into that solenoid activation circuit solenoid has to click in order for the car to go so and that should be instantaneous so I would need to know some more information on that one question number two I have a 2003 club car and sometimes after I set the parking brake the brake lights stay on what am I doing wrong well there's there's two types of systems you know you have to understand the brake lights come on every time you press the brake pedal okay so they had to come up with a way when you set the parking brake see the brake pedal is pressed so they had to come up with a way to when you set the parking brake the brake pedal is still pressed so that means your brake lights are on so you had to figure out a way to turn the brake lights out so there's two there's two systems that I'm aware of. Okay, one of them it involves two micro switches. One is hooked to your brake pedal. When you press that, it hits a micro switch and that turns your brake lights on. You release the brake pedal, uh, brake lights go out. When you hit the parking brake, it's, it, it activates a second micro switch, which cuts the circuit. So in other words, if you when you hit the parking brake, brake lights don't come on. Now that's one type of system that's out there. Another type is just a delay timer on the on the brake lights when you hit the parking brake so you hit the parking brake there's a timer delay device timer relay in your in your light uh, harness that usually it's about four minutes so my question would be are you sure that they don't turn off after four minutes or if it if it is the other type with the two micro switches you could have a faulty micro switch let's see number three this is from Larry. Just got this car, 2001 Easy Go. New batteries. I believe, so they said. Anyway, it can drive for 20 to 30 minutes, then it will stop. I can turn off the ignition key, wait for just a few minutes, and then it will run fine. Check battery voltage seems to be fine. 
Uh, let's see, I've talked about this many times. I've, uh, and I, on a daily basis, I end up having a conversation similar to this one with customers on the phones, it seems like. Uh, it, first of all, is this a lifted car would be my first question. Is the car lifted? And that would be, that would be one question. Because uh, what you're describing sounds like, I know I always say I want to eliminate the batteries at first, but you, you act like you've already eliminated the batteries. So if it's not the batteries, but it still feels like it's the batteries, it's probably the, your controller is going into thermal shutdown because that's exactly what it, that's exactly what happens. The, the uh, controllers going into thermal shutdowns when they get, they heat up to a point where they'll shut themselves off to try to avoid any, any more damage. And as long as it cools off a little bit, as soon as it cools off down to a safe temperature, then you get back on your cart and you can drive it fine. The, the problem with that is that repeated thermal shutdown over and over and over again will cause a controller failure eventually. So that's what it sounds like. If it's not your batteries, then it's most likely that. Number four. Yamaha 48 volt battery charger receptacle. I have old female connection off, just positive and negative wires stripped at the ends. Do I just wrap them around the new receptacles and bolt them down? Not exactly sure if I understand exactly what you're talking about, but if you're talking about what I think you are, anything you can do to get a, as a good a tightest connection as possible, if you can bolt them down, everything should be fine. Now, uh, the, just the loose connections in an electrical system, that's one of the enemies besides heat. Heat is the main enemy in an electrical golf cart system. But loose connections can cause heat and can cause heat and can cause heat just to get worse and worse and worse and worse. So anything you can do to keep a good tight connection. Okay, let's see, number five. Bought a 2018 club car that was refurbished in 2020 and the car only goes 10 miles an hour. What is the first thing I should address? I was told it had been governed to go 10 miles an hour because it was on a golf course. Okay, that that would bring up a couple of questions in my mind uh, uh, right off the bat. My first question would be, why would a 2018 car need refurbishing only after two years? Because you said it got refurbished in 2020. So that would, so what would you, what do you mean by refurbished? I guess, did they just put a new body on it or something like that? Because that seems like a very short amount of time for a, a golf cart to need anything. You know, just after two years, it shouldn't really need anything, even if it spent his life on the golf course, the first two years on the golf course. Now, the 10 mile an hour thing, that could be very true. See, when a, when a golf cart, when a golf pro at a golf course orders a fleet of golf cars, he orders that fleet. Now, this is nowadays, and a long time ago, he didn't really have the choices that they do now. Now he can order that fleet to be set at a certain speed. Every one of those golf cars can be set at a certain speed, depending on the terrain on his particular golf course. Like a golf course that's very, very hilly with lots of hills, the pro can set have the, the whole fleet set for maximum regenerative braking. That would not allow anybody to freewheel down those hills into eternity and, you know, and flip the golf cart or anything. It's only gonna allow it to go a certain amount. Now, 10 miles an hour seems pretty slow. Uh, Usually it's going to be somewhere between 12 and 14, but uh, because it's a 2018 that was redone in 20, that would mean that it, it can be checked, you know, to see you can have your regenerative braking changed and maybe even speed up your golf cart. Club car could plug in their computer to it if you went to a club car dealer and they could, they could check your settings and make sure that everything is normal in, in your M core and your controller settings because tens, the tens, that's, that's pretty severe. That's pretty severely slow. Okay. Let's see. Number six, what is the best way to get a softer ride in my 2000 club car DS? Well, Unfortunately, there's not much you can do to get a softer ride. Besides, play with your air pressure in your tires. You could lower your air pressure in your tires. You could get a 
taller tire uh, might help a little bit. Uh, you could put a lift kit with some taller tires and then maybe give you a little bit more room to adjust air pressure down. But if you're all, if you're running the stock leaf springs, you're, if you're not running heavy duty leaf springs, uh, if you're just running the stock, I don't know of any suspension that's softer than the stock leaf spring on a club car DS. Now there, there are suspensions that are tougher, you know, heavier duty, they're even stiffer, it would make a, a stiffer ride. So there's not much you can do there besides play with your air pressure and your, and your tire choice. Remember this too, lower profile tires, they tend to ride, they, they tend to ride rougher than higher profile tires. So when you get a higher, what I mean by that is that the height of the tire above the edge of the rim, you know, you got, you got these really low profile tires nowadays and they look really cool and everything, but they tend to have a, a pretty stiff ride uh, if, if you're not on completely smooth asphalt. So you might ought to think about a higher profile tire and that gives you a little bit more room to adjust air pressure. That, that could help. Let's see, number seven, an easy go 36 volt cart. I noticed recently I wasn't getting much mileage from it, if not plugged in all the time. Testing some things today, I noticed quite a big arc when disconnecting one of the battery cables. This arc happens with or without the key on and regardless of the forward and reverse switch position. However, it does not arc when I put the speed controller switch in the tow position. Okay, we're gonna, well, we're going to take this one in a couple of different sections. That's the first section. So my first advice is to never remove any battery cables without it being in the tow position. Never do any type of battery work or never disconnect any cables without the, the, the switch being in the tow position. If your cart has a run tow switch, put it in the tow position before removing or replacing any battery cables at all or making any type of uh, connections at all. The batteries were a few months were new a few months ago. However, I wonder if I damaged something by running the old batteries too long. Several times I remember running them right down to the point that the cables got hot. Thank you for any direction you can provide. Well, the cables getting hot would be an indication that you're putting something under a strain, you know, a, a pretty good strain. Uh, now, could you have ruined, the, could you have shortened the life of the batteries by running them too low? Yes, you could have because golf cart batteries are deep cycle batteries. Deep cycle batteries in general like to be fully charged all the time. That's their favorite position to be in is fully charged. They don't like to be run all the way dead. Now, deep cycle handles that better than some batteries. It handles it better than other types of batteries. That's why golf carts use deep cycle batteries because they're designed to, to, to get used really, really deeply, but they don't still don't want to be used all the way to the bottom. You know, they, they, they go real deep in the discharge cycle and then they're charged back up. That's what they're designed to do. But they still don't want to go all the way to the bottom. So if you were running them all the way to the bottom, you know, that could have, that could have done some damage. So the thing you need to do is you need to have a load test done on your batteries, a discharge test, and a golf cart shop can do that for you and tell you exactly how good your battery pack is as a whole to see if that is your problem. It, uh, it could be, but they, they could tell you that a discharge machine is basically a load tester, but it load tests your entire battery pack at once, not just one battery at a time. It load tests and a timer goes off as it's load testing the battery pack. And depending on how long that timer goes off, they can give you a really good idea of how good your battery pack is. Let me check over here on uh, Facebook and YouTube, see if we got anybody in the shadows here lurking. Don't see anything on Facebook. Anybody in the, in the chat, feel free to say something. Don't see anything. Okay. Let's see. We're going to go to number eight. Nineteen ninety two easy go. 
Replace the solenoid batteries and battery wire. Still having issues with my golf cart. At first, it wouldn't move after the new batteries. Confirmed they were installed correctly. Took it to his shop and they replaced the switch for the forward and reverse. Worked fine. Noticed later after a full charge it ran real strong but then it would die out and then speed up again. Referring to your blog, you mentioned a speed magnet on the speed control. I was thinking the controller may be failing. I think these may be the only parts left to change. All right. On a on your particular cart on a '92 Easy Go, there's not a speed magnet on the on the end of the motor. If, if that's what you're talking about, that's only on regenerative braking cars. Yours is a series wound system. It doesn't have a speed magnet. Now, from from your description, uh, it's gonna you're you're probably right because it's either going to be your batteries. Your, your symptom is very uh, it's very specific. It's either going to be your batteries is the problem, or it's going to be the, your controller. And if you're sure that your batteries are fine, then it's in the controller is the only thing that's left. All right, number nine, Club Car 48 volt OEM charger. This is from BJ. I recently purchased a 2009 Club Car 48 volt for our houseboat dock. Batteries are two years old. The charger is plugged into a 50-foot heavy-duty 12-gauge extension cord, which in turn is plugged into an exterior outlet on the houseboat. The houseboat runs off of a 50-amp 125-250 volt dock cord. The charger seems to work well, but gets very hot. Do I need to run a separate dock receptacle for the charger not going through the houseboat? How many amps does the OEM Lester charger pull? And would a new electrical electronic charger pull fewer amps and be more efficient? Okay. Lots of lots of questions there, so we're going to take them one at a time. I'm going to leave this up on the screen. Uh, first of all, it is not recommended to to run a golf cart charger off of a of, off of an extension cord uh, unless it is a solid state charger. So you you don't tell me since it's a 2009. It is very likely that that is just a transformer type charger uh, and not a solid state charger. So that wouldn't be recommended to use an extension cord. <clears throat> okay. Charger seems to work but gets very hot. Okay. If it was a wearing issue with the, with the, using the extension cord, then the charger wouldn't really be getting hot. The, the extension cord would be getting hot. So that would be my question. Is the extension cord getting hot? Now the charger getting hot is an indication that he's having a really hard time charging the batteries in your golf cart. Like is your golf cart batteries really, really dead? That would make the charger get hot. Uh, do I need to run a separate dock receptacle for the charger not going through the houseboat? That would probably be wise or, or you could just make some adjustments here and see if you can eliminate the heat problem. How many amps does the OEM Lester charger pull? If it's the transformer type, it's about a 13 amp charger. And would a new electronic charger pull fewer amps and be more efficient? The answer to that would be yes, if, if it is a transformer type charger. The answer to that would be yes. There's the, a newer Summit 2, Lester Summit 2 charger would be, is a solid state charger and it would be way more efficient and uh, probably a better charger than what you have too. Let's see, number 10. I have 2010 Club Car Villager. Parking brake will sometimes not allow golf cart to engage. Could it be a faulty switch? Well, yes, it could be a faulty switch. Uh, then, but the parking brake itself, is that's a mechanical system. It doesn't really have anything to do with anything electrical. So. Uh, so it could be a faulty switch, depending on what what uh, type of potentiometer you have. If if it's an M, if it's a club car with a M core, then it could be an M core. If it's electric, uh, if it's gas, it could be the switch in the G core. Uh, it could be something in the solenoid activation circuit. You know that is that is uh, intermittent. But intermittent things like that are very hard to diagnose. It's almost better. It's it's always better when you bring a cart to a golf cart shop if it's broken, doesn't work. It's a lot easier to figure out what the problem is. 
let's see, number 11. Exhorted 42 charger, blinking on green light. My charger is cutting on and off. I checked all connections, all seems good. Plus clean the contacts. My charger is cutting on and off because, well, are you saying that you think your charger is cutting on and off because the green light's blinking on and off? Well, I would, I would want to verify that. You, you could verify that with a voltmeter. Put on your batteries, put a voltmeter on your batteries and see where your voltage is at with the charger running. You know, when your charger's plugged in, charger's going. And, and see if your volts, if your charger's cutting on and off, your volts are gonna be going up and down, up and down, up and down. So I would wanna verify that because a lot of chargers, the blinking green light is normal. That just means that they're, that they're on and charging. So I would wanna verify that your charger's cutting on and off first. Let me go over here to Facebook and see what's up. Uh, it looks like we, for some reason, we lost YouTube. Hmm. Didn't even notice it. We look, looks like we lost YouTube, so we're just on Facebook right now. Anyway, we'll keep going. Number 12. Easygo TXT 2015 analog link charger, like you show in the video. When I plug it in, the gauge goes to 10, then zero, and back to 10 like you show. When the cart is turned on, the gauge on the cart dash goes to full, then zero, and stays there. No lights appear on the next morning on the dial. Dial hasn't moved, but the cart goes as usual, top speed. I bought a digital charger off Amazon a few months ago, but I'm not sure how to use it or if I need to. Well, I don't really like to, I think I've said this before, I don't, I never advise a customer to rely on that battery gauge because if everything else, any of the, the battery gauges, it, it's okay, it's, it's a good, it gives you a good indication of where you might be, uh, but it's, like I said, where you might be. It's, uh, they're notoriously not accurate as, as they need to be. And if everything is normal with your battery pack and everything is fine with your golf cart, you shouldn't have to even have a battery gauge because you, you sh it would be very difficult to run a good set of batteries down on a golf cart in one day, in, in, in an entire day. It would be hard to do. You would literally have to like drive to the next town or something in it, you know, in order to do that. Uh, and at the end of the day, plug it in. Plug your cart in whenever you get through with it. Just plug it in and when you're through with it and then it'll be ready to go again tomorrow. Uh, that's the easiest way that I, that I can look at it to cause the least amount of complications. I mean, people get confused about their battery gauge not showing full, and I've had so many questions about that, and I've never worried about that in, in all my golf cart experience. I've never, my, my personal cars, I've never put a battery gauge on there. I just stayed on top of making sure I knew when I charged my golf cart last. You know, that was what I did. So. I wouldn't rely on that gauge is what I'm saying. Uh, not not 100%, you know, I wouldn't rely on it 100%. Okay, let's go to 13. How do I remove the charging port bezel on a 2010 Yamaha electric golf cart? Well, if you'll if you'll look at the the bezel, there's you'll see three uh, you, you see the push pin rivets, it's either screws or Allen screws. It's got three of them on it. There's three holes in it. It's, uh, so depending on how it's mounted in there, it just, it just depends on what you know, tool you're going to need to take it out. But it's real simple. It's right there in the front. Okay. What do you use on noisy belts on carts? Well, if we're talking about the, well, I guess any, any belt. So if we're talking about, you know, we're obviously talking about gas carts. There's, there's a uh, two belts. There's a starter generator belt, which is a skinny belt. And then there's your, your clutch belt. Your clutch belt goes around your drive clutch on around your uh, secondary clutch. Uh, on 
usually if the if the sheaves on the clutches are smooth and everything is fine they're clean and smooth the thing to do if you have a noisy belt like a squeaking belt just replace the belt it could be an indication that the belt has gotten down is worn down to a point where it's starting to squeak for some reason so just replace the belt with a new one now on the starter generator belt i've i have seen those make a noise uh, when they're too loose, but they make a noise right at the beginning because the starter will spin inside the belt and make a real high pitched squealing noise. So if that's the case, you might need to just tighten that up. If you're talking about that belt, you might need to tighten that, that particular belt up. Number 15, electric cart hesitates as driving. Seems to lose contact with power briefly, then re-engages. Re Yesterday was the first time it disengaged long enough to cause the cart to slow down. Could it be the governor cable? Uh, if we're talking about a gas cart, then yes, it very well could be the governor, governor cable. The governor, that's what the governor cable does. That's what the governor does. Is the governor tries to keep you from going over a certain speed. Whatever it is set for, it works really hard to back off on the carburetor if your cart starts to go too fast and that will that will feel like somebody is just like it's losing contact it's not actually losing contact it's the governor kicking in and, and keeping you at a certain speed so if it's it might need adjusting you know to to make it a little bit more smoother when the, when they work uh when they're working right they're really smooth and it's, it's almost non-detectable so if you're detecting something really severe it may need to be adjusted Let's see, number 16. This is for Mike. I have a 91 Easy Go Marathon. It has the old resistor, coil, assembly, etc. I want to rewire and update new components to everything so I can run a new motor and controller. I realize this will require a harness, foot pedal, pot, and some other type of cart, maybe. HD solenoid, HD reverse switch, maybe use 94 or newer easy go one, and of course the motor and controller. I'm looking for max torque, not speed, hilly terrain here, big tires, lifted and seat hauling bed on the back. Do not find any kit specific for my cart, just 94 and newer on club car, etc. Since I'm planning on rewiring it basically with all new items, do you, rec do you have a recommendation as to what wiring kit would be the best way to go and I can get components for that. I can fabricate brackets, linkages, etc. for anything needed. That is not a problem. Is there any ideas or thoughts that you could help me get this accomplished? Thank you. I remember speaking with Mike about this this past week and we discussed and I gave him my ideas because I've basically done almost exactly what he's doing except I didn't do it for max torque. I did it for max speed. Since he, and my advice to him was this, since he already has an easy go marathon, okay, he has a marathon, but he's got the wrong marathon. He's got the old resistor type marathon. You can't do, none of those upgrades are going to fly with that, with that old resistor type uh, electrical system. So all that's got to go, all that's got to go. And then get the power wiring diagram for a normal marathon, not when I say normal, a uh, solid state marathon, the one with a controller, one with a solid state controller electronic controller there there were several years that marathons had a had a controller and that they weren't the resistor type so he needs to get the power wiring diagram for that which is readily available they're all over the place and then start there and then wire it exactly like that exactly like that and then you'll be you'll be ready for your torque motor you'll be ready for your big fat controller you'll be ready for your heavy duty solenoid you, you're going to have to install a, a zero to five k potentiometer you know that's what the controller type marathons used but it's the simplest wiring diagram that I know of. And since you already have a marathon, that would be the easiest way to go and the most efficient way to go. And you could, you could literally make the wiring harness too. We, and I was talking to, with him about that. You could make the wiring harness. There's not really that many wires involved. You could make every single one of them. You wouldn't have to get a wiring, har wiring harness out of another marathon unless it was readily available, which it might be. You know, it was something else that we talked about. Like old marathons sitting in a boneyard at a golf cart shop are probably a dime a dozen that need batteries. And that's all they're going to need. So he might could find one that has a wiring harness in it. Let's see. Number 17. This is from Ralph. I'm trying to increase 
the speed of my 2005 club car precedent as much as possible by using the largest tires that it can that can possibly fit without a lift kit. If necessary, I will put larger tires in the back than the front. I am assuming that it is rear wheel drive, but I really don't know, is it? Since the rear wheels don't steer, they won't rub against the body like the fronts. I would like to use the same size wheels and maybe use low profile tires as regulars in regulars in the back tires if this will help. Your assistance in the matter would be greatly appreciated. Now, first of all, yes, it is rear wheel drive. Uh, golf carts are rear wheel drive. Uh, second of all, you're, you're actually correct in what you're thinking. If you put taller tires, it wouldn't matter if you put taller tires on the front anyway, it's not going to speed anything up. It's only going to matter if you put taller tires in the rear. That's going to speed you up a little bit because you're changing the gear ratio of what your car's running at and it's coming from the rear. So the front's just rolling. The front's just being pushed along. So yeah, you could do that. Uh, you could experiment and see how big a tire you could put on it and that would speed it up. Uh, let me see, what kind of car did you say you had there? It's a 2005 Club Car Precedent. Okay, well, a 2005 Club Car Precedent is also programmable by the dealer. Uh, to speed up. You can, I mean, how fast does it go now? Because the dealer can program that just with a couple of clicks of a few buttons on their little computer. They could speed it up to about 19.6 miles an hour. So if you're not running 19.6, you could, you could think about that instead of doing the tire thing also. Or you could do it in conjunction with the tire thing if you needed more speed. Uh, there also is, you could probably, uh, there's a high speed gear set available. You, you could get that. If you're not worried about torque, if you're only worried about flat ground speed, there's a that's a few things you could do, yeah. But you're you're right about putting the taller tires. That will speed it up a little bit. Okay. Let's check over here on Facebook. Looks like we got Brian Hughes on Facebook. What's up, Brian Hughes? He says he has a 2001 club car. He replaced the charger with an a Baku, but cart won't recognize a charger plugged in unless I switch to neutral. Switch to neutral, key switch on, and toggle accelerator pedal a couple of times. Then cart clicks and begins charging. Hmm. Well, I can tell you this. That's your charger is has nothing to do with you with that system. There, there's a charging circuit, and then there's a, a whole nother circuit that, that for your car to be running. So, I would be, I'd have questions about that charger. Replace charger. Have a coup. Yeah, I don't know about that charger, but that it should not. That definitely should not happen. You, you shouldn't have to wake your car up. So what you're describing is you're having to wake your car up. Uh, before, before the charger is recognized. Uh, that It definitely should not be that way. It, uh, maybe that charger is not designed to be used with a car with an onboard computer because your 2001 48-volt uh, car has an onboard computer. You don't tell me if it's 48 volts, but if it is 48 volts, then that is a, that's an onboard computer car. And maybe that charger is not designed to be used with that. That's what I would think. Let's see. Before I forget, go to golfcartgarage.com. Look for this logo. This logo is Extreme Golf Cart Makeover Season 2 with Dave. You can enter to win cash and prizes. Uh, Dave's got some videos out. Uh, having to do with the EasyGo TXT that's getting some modifications and some really cool stuff done to it. So look for this logo and uh, enter, enter to win. To get, to get more information, check for that logo. Also, remember that I am a member of the Gearheads On Demand service that we offer here at Golf Cart Garage. If you were interested in talking with me or one of the other technicians about a golf cart related issue, just click the link in the description. That'll bring you to the scheduling page. And you can go from there and I'll, and I'll call you at whatever time you, you picked. I get automatically notified. It's a really cool system. All right. Let's see. It looks like it's going to be about it for me today. Thank everybody for coming. Let me check 
Facebook one more time. See. Yeah, Brian says it is OBC. Yeah. Well, I am concerned that that charger might not be uh, to be used in conjunction with the OBC. That's why I was saying that. So that would be my uh, that would be what I would think on that particular situation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why we lost YouTube, but anyway, I'll see everybody next week. The garage is now closed.